I think there is some truth in this, but I don't think all of this is correct. But let me go through this first. Gary replied to Tavi here by saying, Sally, this is probably correct. He said, there's a group of Tesla influencers who monetize their activity on the platform. And as that monetization scales with engagement, and as engagement skyrockets, whenever their posts or replies get interacted with by Elon, their focus is on always being flattering towards Elon at the exclusion of basic objectivity. It's that group who, in their relentless efforts to praise everything Elon does and to shoot down any criticism towards him or Tesla, along with a larger group of useful idiots, uh, people who uncritically trust whatever those in the first group proclaim, who cause the most division within the community. Okay, just think about this for one second. Today, I went through Holmar's catalog, Omar account, and clearly he's being quite critical about Tesla's referral program. And also we have seen Elon Musk replied to James and James sometimes is incredibly critical of Elon Musk. There are some that do praise Elon quite a bit though. But some of these people also don't really shy away from being critical. Maybe not as critical as they otherwise would be. But still, Omar <laughs> uh, can be pretty critical at times. But also, he's occasionally incredibly optimistic. Anyway, Fred, the electric reporter, jumped into this discussion as well. This is fascinating to me. I've been claiming that this group of Tesla influencers have broken Elon's feedback loop for years, but he sees tweets from James as well. And clearly he is often very critical. Tesla bears have been claiming falsely that Tesla and our Elon have been paying these people to promote Tesla. Now, Elon has found a way to pay them Twitter monetization plus amplification. You make almost no money though on Twitter. I heard Farzad say that something like 1% of his total revenue comes from Twitter. 99% comes from YouTube. And by the way, if we are going to make it an issue that some of these people that post positive things about Tesla on X are somehow a problem because they can make a little bit of money from Twitter ads, then you sort of have to make the same argument about Tesla bears and these Tesla Q accounts. They are also being paid to promote negativity about Tesla then, aren't they? Although they will have a harder time getting monetized to meet the minimum threshold requirements in terms of views and stuff like that. Uh, largely because what they say makes absolutely no sense, so therefore not many people are actually paying attention to them. Fred continues, I guess when Elon said that he would find a way for the Twitter acquisition to be good for Tesla after he crashed the stock by selling shares and then used Tesla engineers to help run the company after he fired everyone, that's what he meant, paying Tesla influencers with Twitter money, but I don't know how good this is for Tesla despite what you hear here. Twitter's reach is small compared to other platforms. As a side effect of the whole Twitter acquisition, Elon Musk did get a bigger following, although he, many people think that he's now more divisive than before. Uh, but he did repost today this about Tesla, that the Tesla brand won the overall loyalty to make, and this already got 1.4 million views, and that the Tesla Model Y received the highest possible safety rating. This was three hours ago, and already it got 10 million views. It will probably get well over 20 million views. Elon reposted another post from Tesla. It got 2.3 million views. In addition to other possible ways, I think one of the main ways that Elon Musk thinks the Twitter acquisition is going to help Tesla is by saving free speech or helping to protect it. I think his thinking is if there's no free speech, if attack on free speech continues, then stocks eventually, things like that, are not really going to be worth much. So it's not really helping Tesla shareholders very directly. It's sort of in a roundabout way. Anyway, I, I think that's what Elon Musk probably thinks. And that's one reason why he's getting political. But I think these political tweets help bring a lot of attention to X. Now, some of these, you can make an argument that they are somewhat damaging to Tesla's brand, perhaps, if Elon makes 
an extremely controversial comment, but it certainly helps X. Alexander says, this is important time sensitive information for all Tesla shareholders. Tesla shareholders will have to vote on some very sensitive subjects soon. If you are invested in ETFs or funds, you're handing your vote to the fund manager. Consider holding Tesla stock directly to be able to vote. I think Steven is absolutely right here. My hot take is that the votes of ETFs and funds holding shares of companies should automatically vote per board recommendations or not be able to vote. It is messed up that those holding stocks on behalf of others can vote on behalf of others, often contrary to their wishes. SpaceX just provided us with an update about the second Starship launch, which happened on November 18th. SpaceX, of course, learned a lot from that launch, but it still ended with a boom. <laughs> and we don't want to see that, ideally. SpaceX says, the most likely root cause for the booster RUD was determined to be filter blockage where liquid oxygen is supplied to the engines leading to a loss of inlet pressure in engine oxidizer turbo pumps that eventually resulted in one engine failing in a way that resulted in loss of the vehicle. That's written so beautiful. Resulted in a loss of a vehicle. Of course, SpaceX has made changes and this issue should be now fixed. I'm looking forward to many Starship launches this year. BYD America boss says, we are not planning to come to the US. It's an interesting market, but it's very complicated if you're talking about EVs. She added that if a car company does not invest in EVs, you are out, you will die, you have no future. And I think she's right. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you in tomorrow's episode. FSD V12 continues to impress. It certainly navigates parking lots quite smoothly, it like, like a person would, largely. Yeah, so that's really exciting. I'm looking forward to getting FSD V12 in my vehicle and trying it myself. When Omar drives it, it looks beautiful. It looks really good. I don't expect it to work nowhere near as well in my car here in Canada, but I do expect it to work quite a bit better than V11.